Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, foreman of this crew of mysterious miscreants who mingle here at this hour. It was King Alfonso X of Spain who modestly remarked, Had I been present at the creation, I would have given some useful hints for the better ordering of the universe. I'm sure that many of us feel, with all due respect and in all modesty, that we too might have made some helpful suggestions of our own. But since none of us was consulted in the arrangement of the world, we must accept it as it is. Or must we? Our mystery drama, The Cornstarch Killer, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Robert Dryden. Boarding House has become a most familiar literary locale, and it is always, almost always, presided over by a landlady. Seldom, if ever, do we encounter a landlord, except perhaps as an inferior appendage to a dominating spouse. Since the ladies have, in our time, invaded hitherto basically masculine domains, turnabout is only fair play. Today, we are concerned with a gentleman who happens to be a landlord of a boarding house. Turn with us now to the first page in the journal of Dennis Truffle. Have you ever waited for death? What a rather ridiculous question. We all wait for death, don't we? But in the prime of life, I suppose we wait for death as an eventuality, not as an impending occurrence. But here I am, starting my story at the end instead of at the beginning. The beginning. It was a rather damp, foggy November night. A moment, if you please. Oh, good evening. I rang your bell. Uh, I heard. It's the most unusual bell for this day and age. This is the most unusual day and age. I agree. To begin afresh, I rang your bell because a sign, a rather neatly lettered sign, said rooms. Do you like the sign, then? I wonder if I might speak with the landlady. Oh, I'm sorry, we don't have one. Uh, will the landlord do? I'm, I'm flexible. Oh, won't you come in? Mr. Dennis Truffle, at your command. I... I am Miss Menhaden. Maud Menhaden. M Menhaden? It's the Indian name for a fish. Oh. Narragansett Indian. The name was given to a convict ancestor of mine. A convict ancestor? Yes, a murderer. You see, many of our early settlers here were transported felons. Evidently, my ancestor must have looked like a fish. <laughs> Hence the name. Now... Is that settled? Why, well, I was not aware that it was ever an issue. Concerning the room. I have an excellent room at the head of the stairs. I'll take it. Well, surely you wish to see it no. first. Oh, well, the rent is $35 a week. How much? Uh, 25 No, 35 sounds right. Oh, well, uh, then uh, shall I help you up with your luggage? What's that? Well, there's a police car, I should imagine. It seems to be coming this way. Yes, yes, I would assume so. Why? Uh, well, uh, un unfortunately, the neighborhood has changed. Stopped here. Why? Uh, uh, hey, excuse me. Hi, Dennis. Oh, Officer Paderewski. Is something wrong? Uh, yeah, we had a little uh, contretemps up the street. Uh, that's contretemps, 
A guy was murdered. Do they have any idea so who... So I thought I'd drop in here and check out some of your creeps, Dennis. Now, see here, Officer Paderewski, that's no way to refer to you the... You do pe- have some real ripe avocados in this joint, Dennis. Now, I will not have my tenants insulted. Okay, Dennis, okay. Who's around? Uh, well, unfortunately, we have more vacancies than we... uh, uh, Presently, the second floor rear, I have Professor Boniface. Where is he right now? Uh, Out. Out where? Communing with nature, I suppose. And the second floor front, I have just acquired as a tenant Miss Maud Menhaden here. Uh, Miss Menhaden, this is Officer Paderewski. Please do not look at me in that way, Officer. In what way? With lust. Oh, I, I, well, I, I wasn't looking with the... Uh, what I am doing is looking at you closely. For what reason? Because that's what a police officer has to do. Why? Because there's been a murder. Are you saying that you suspect me of committing the murder? Oh, no, no, no. Do no, I no. have the key to my room, Mr. Truffle? Yes, of course. Uh, to answer your unspoken question, Miss uh, Menhaden... Am I related to the famous pianist? I am sure of it. Here's your key, Miss Menhaden. Now, I say this because I have a little boy who plays the piano. Thank you, Mr. Truffle. Good night. Good night. Of course, he only plays by ear. (sighs) Yeah. That one is built. Built? Constructed. Put together. (laughs) Ooh, there's a lot of woman there. Uh, she she uh, does seem to be of uh, generous proportions. <laughs> hey, what's she doing in a joint like this? Well, I assume she requires refined surroundings. Uh, uh, sure, sure. Well, Dennis, keep me posted, huh? Yeah, I gotta hustle around, see if I uh, can't catch that killer. Uh, who was the victim? Oh, guy was a manager at the bus depot. You're just up the block... He was on his way home from work. And it happened a half hour ago, you say? Uh Uh-huh. Half hour ago, I was in my sitting room with Chapman's Homer. Oh, come on, Dennis. You don't need an alibi. And a fellow human being was being stabbed to death. (sighs) Yeah. Hey, hold on, Dennis. Huh? All I told you was a guy was murdered. How did you know he was stabbed? But if it happened just up the block and the killer had used a gun, then I would have heard the shot, I dare say. Yeah. Good thinking, Dennis. <laughs> See you around. How did I know the victim had been stabbed? My quick, glib explanation to Officer Pandoreski may have sounded convincing, but the fact is, it wasn't true. It's just that the moment I heard of the killing, instinctively, I knew it had to be a stabbing. Why? Tonight, for the first time, I'm aware of a kind of of lightness, a kind of incisive understanding, a sharpness in my brain. I can't analyze it. It seemed to enter my mind when Miss Menhaden entered the house. Now, Miss Menhaden... Uh, That reminds me. Uh, She had gone upstairs without her luggage. Ah, Miss Menhaden. A rather large woman, but so exquisitely... Uh, Well, that was neither here nor there. I'm I'm sorry to disturb you, Miss Menhaden. Yes? Uh, Do you require assistance with your luggage? My luggage? You do have luggage. Oh, my luggage. I, I, I didn't see you bring it in. Is it outside? Yes. What, you mean you, you left it in front of the house? No, I mean it outside. Somewhere. Somewhere? I uh, lost it. Oh. Well, the fact is, I didn't lose it, actually. The bus lost it. But how, how could a bus lose luggage? I don't know. It was placed on the bus when I got on. It was missing when I got off. But surely the people at the bus company I would don't not like be... the people at the bus company. But there is some official at the bus depot oh, who yes, could... yes, there was. Well, what did he do? He looked at me 
in a manner that I cannot tolerate. Well, what sort of manner is that? A lewd manner. Oh, well, surely... And he... I shall not return there. But don't you want to find your luggage? That which is lost shall not be found again, and that which is missing shall be gone forever. Uh, yes, but Is still, there anything you... else? Uh... No, 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 except that this man who was murdered a half hour ago happened to be employed at the bus depot. Indeed. He, he, he was the manager. Oh. Was he the one who looked at you in what you considered a, a, a lewd manner? I didn't consider it lewd. It was lewd. Well, at any rate, the poor fellow is dead now. He's been punished. Punished? Oh, yes. There's no doubt about it. But w w what did he do? Is it possible you haven't been listening to me, Mr. Truffle? I told you what he did. He was all so lascivious and salacious. The sin of lust, Mr. Truffle. It must be stamped out. Well, be that as it may, Miss Menhaden, even if he were sinful, that's hardly the reason he was killed, I would imagine. Really? Well, why do you suppose he was killed? Well, he was coming home from work. This is a Friday evening. He was carrying his pay envelope, I suppose, and some thief. No, he wasn't robbed. He was struck down for his sins. You say, say he was not robbed? He was not robbed. Well, but uh, how, how do you know? I know. But how? Retribution, Mr. Truffle. Retribution. The hand of justice cannot be stayed. Whole cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, were expunged from the earth. What difficulty would there be in striking down one Harry Perkins? Harry Perkins? The obscene animal who lusted after me in the bus terminal office. Yeah, but the bus terminal, uh, well, it, it's right in the middle of the floor in plain view. What could he have possibly been able to... I could read his thoughts. Oh, well, There's I... There's a poem... Mm which I shall send to his widow. Perhaps she will see fit to make it his epitaph. Harry Perkins. Vulgar of manner, overfed, overdressed and underbred. Heartless, godless, hell's delight. Rude by day and lewd by night. Well, I would hardly think she would. And now there is one less of them. Them? It takes all kinds, as they say, and we seem to have a special kind right here in Dennis Truffle's boarding house. Why did Mr. Harry Perkins die? You are probably spinning your own yarn, so why don't we compare designs when we meet again in just a few moments for Act Two? French, as you know, during the 1930s, constructed a system of fortifications called the Maginot Line. This was considered an impregnable defense against invasion. We mention this because into the boarding house of Mr. Dennis Truffle has come a Miss Maud Menhaden, a lady whose defense of her virtue is also seemingly formidable. We read further from the journal of Dennis Truffle. Before I continue, I must digress briefly uh, for a point of personal information. Since I have never actively courted a member of the, the, the fair sex, certain coarse and unkind people have seen fit to, to question, as it were, my, my inclinations. I shall not dignify this slander by rebuttal. I, I, I was taught by dad and mother to venerate. Venerate. Uh, the verb itself is the Latin root for love. To venerate the feminine sex. And to look at woman as a temple of virtue who contains within herself... Uh, well, no matter. It is merely that I have never met until tonight, until Miss Menhaden entered my house and therefore my l life... Oh, what am I saying? Uh, well, 
Miss Menhaden frightens me. What did she say? That Mr. Harry Perkins was not killed by a thief? Is it true? I must find out. Hey, Dennis! What are you doing out this hour? Well, what am I doing? Well, this ain't exactly the kind of neighbor to take a constitutional. Well, I thought I Besides, would... Besides, I thought, what would that dame... Dame? Ha uh, ha, you're the cagey one, Dennis. I don't know what you're talking about, Officer Paderewski. That luscious dame. That is no way to refer to Miss Menhaden. Why? Is it a lie? Well, uh, tell me, Officer Paderewski, this man who was killed up the street, this, huh? this, this Mr. Perkins, the ma manager at the bus depot. Yeah, yeah. Why was he killed? Why? Well, was it uh, a robbery? Why do you think it was a robbery? Well, it must have been Friday night, payday. Uh, let me tell you why it wasn't a robbery, Dennis. Because his wallet was in his pocket, his ring was on his finger, his watch was on his wrist. Oh. And he was stabbed? Yeah. Stabbed in a back. The back? A nice, clean little wound. But it did the job. And the killer left no clue behind at all? Not a thing. Then you're c completely in the dark. Uh, there's one little item. Nobody can figure out what it means. The dead man had a kind of white smudge you know, just above his chin. What kind of smudge? I told you, a kind of white smudge. Yeah, well, what was the, the smudge made of? <laughs> if I told you, you'd be even more confused than I am. <laughs> cornstarch. Cornstarch? Figure it out. What was he doing with a cornstarch smudge across his face? Cornstarch. Well, <clears throat> what are we going to do? Huh? Stand around here all night saying cornstarch? Look, why didn't you go back to the house where it's nice and warm and cozy and there's this Miss Menhaden? So, she was right. It wasn't a robbery after all. He was murdered for another reason. What other reason? Who had come up behind him and stabbed poor Mr. Perkins in the back? Is it possible... He had been punished? Why had she been so sure? And the cornstarch, what did the cornstarch mean? It was too much. I went back home and brewed myself a nice hot cup of tea. Mr. Truffle. Ah, the, oh, you startled I'm me. I'm sorry. I was very deep in my thoughts. I'm sorry to invade the privacy of your kitchen. Oh, 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 oh any time, Miss Menhaden. Will you join me in a cup of tea? You are a very unusual person, Mr. Truffle. Oh, well... You're I... a man of the highest sensibilities and finest personal character. Well, you I, have a I... reverence and a respect for womanhood. I... You are completely free from sin. As I hope to be one day. One day? Yes. I must continue to fight temptation. Constantly. Oh, but surely, Miss Menhaden, love between men and women... Is filled uh, with traps and pitfalls, snares set by Satan, and furthermore, this lust, this love, this carnal knowing... Oh, I must not bore you with a recital of my innermost feelings. Oh, no, please, Miss Menhaden, feel free Yes, to Mr. Take... Truffle, you are a fine human being. One of the very few, perhaps. The only one who deserves to be saved. And I shall do my utmost to save you. Oh, well, I would certainly appreciate it. I came you... down here for a purpose. Do you have any cornstarch? Uh, cornstarch? Cornstarch. Ordinary, everyday cornstarch. <laughs> of course, I realize cornstarch has become old-fashioned in this so-called improved world we are afflicted with. Well, I, I, I have a box right here. Uh, here, take it. Oh, I just need a little... Use as much as you like and return the rest. Well, thank you, Mr. Truffle. Uh, no, don't return it. I, I r rarely, if ever, use it. Cornstarch has an almost infinite variety of uses. For example, do you know what I use it for? No. 
Well, you may find this somewhat difficult to believe, but at one time... Uh, hey, old... Dennis, old pal, old chap, old buddy. <laughs> Let's have a little drink. Professor, oh, I... Oh, you... come on, Dennis, baby. You got the bottle underneath the sink. Now, Professor, you've had too much. Sure, to... sure, but it's no good if you don't have too much. Ain't that so, baby? I beg you. Uh, Miss Menhaden, may I present Professor you Wilbur? You may not. Oh, what bit her? Uh, Professor Boniface is your fellow boarder. This hulk, this carrion, look at yourself. A corrupted container of lust and sin. <laughs> is that bad? You will be struck down in the midst of your obscene... Uh, Professor, you look tired. It's time you got to bed. Uh, that's, that's right, Dennis, old boy. Time for bed. <laughs> What do you say, sweetie? You have chosen licentiousness. You have chosen to revel in the depravity of the flesh. What, what is she carrying on about? Now, Professor, you are being rather uh, forward. Ah, so what? A little loving never killed anybody. Take heed. A little loving may very well kill you. Good night, Mr. Truffle. Good hey. night, Miss Menhagen. Good night. Honey. Now, really, <laughs> Professor, she was highly insulted. Ah, what do you know about it, Dennis? I know that Miss Menhaden is a highly moral... Miss per Menhaden is a woman. And you never insult any woman by praising her. Must you be so uh, indelicate? Uh, oh, what can I do, Dennis? It's the law of human nature. From this point on... Uh, I must be extremely careful with my facts, lest I inadvertently do someone an injustice. I permitted Professor Boniface to wheedle several drinks of a rather strong, spirituous liquor which I keep about the premises, uh, purely for medicinal purposes. The result was he passed out. I then assisted him up to his room where I deposited him safely onto his bed. On the way back downstairs, I passed by Miss Menhaden's door. I paused for a moment. I was about to knock, uh, to inquire if she was all right, when it seemed to me I heard a rather strange noise. What could it be? And then I remembered where I had heard such a sound before. It was a knife being sharpened on a whetstone, a smooth, marble-like stone. I remember it was the sound made by Dad as he sharpened his razor, the sound one makes when one carefully and patiently puts a fine cutting edge on a delicate steel blade. But, of course, it may have been nothing of the sort, which brings me to the next evening. Well, Professor, how are you this evening? Uh, whatever happened to uh, Helen of Troy? According to Homer, she went home to Sparta with her husband, King Menelaus, where they... Oh, said... that ain't the one I'm talking about. I mean the lady upstairs. Well, why do you call her... Because she's the best-looking dame I ever seen. Uh, uh, that's the angle that I'm going to use on her. What angle? You know, feed her all them classics. Chicks really go for the country, guys. Well, I, I don't think Miss Menhaden goes, as you say, for anybody. Oh, I've seen her in action, Dennis. Oh, 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 oh that one is mine. All mine. Ha uh, well, how, how can you say that? Because it's a fact. No woman can resist Wilberforce, the body, body face. I am now in stage two, as far as she's concerned. But what, what is stage two? I play hard to get. You must understand, he believed every word he said, poor professor. He'd been in the boxing ring, you know. He was the junior light heavyweight champion of Stormfield, New Hampshire. And it was said the experience left him intoxicated. Uh, no, punch drunk. Well, at any rate, he went out. About a half hour later... Oh, good evening, Mr. Truffle. Oh, well, good, good evening, Miss Menhaden. Uh, may I offer you some supper? No, no, thank you, Mr. Truffle. The hosts of the Lord must fast before they go into battle. Battle? Battle. Well, that sounds grim. On the contrary, it's glorious. Uh, you say you're 
going into battle. But where does this, this, this combat, where is it scheduled to take place? Wherever I find it. Wherever I find some poor, depraved wretch who, blinded by error, is groveling in sin, I open his eyes to the true glory and thus save his soul. Oh. And speaking of depraved wretches, where is Professor Boniface this evening? Out. Out. Where? Well, I'm sure it would distress you to know that he will be going from one low place of entertainment and, and refreshment to another. Yes. It is distressing. Oh, Mr. Truffle, if only all men were like you. Like me? Pure. Well, she went out. Uh, that, uh, that was about 8 p.m. She returned, I would say, at about 11. There was absolutely nothing unusual about her appearance or manner. I remember I said... Good evening, Miss Manhattan. Good evening, Mr. Truffle. I wonder, did you save any souls this evening? I may have. And with that rather cryptic remark, she went upstairs to her room. And I heard her lock the door behind her. I then put on a record of a 16th century Danish composer and was almost lulled to sleep by the dissonances when there was a loud clanging of my doorbell. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm coming. Dennis. Officer Paderewski. Oh, Dennis. Dennis, I got some bad news for you. So get a hold of yourself. Now, I know how fond you was of him and... It's... Professor Boniface, isn't it? Yeah. Old Boniface. And... And he's been murdered. Yes, Dennis. How did you know? How did he know? We all knew, didn't we? We knew that Professor Boniface was not long for this world. And we could tell by the way Miss Menhaden was carrying on that she was the one who would dispatch him on his journey to eternity. But is this a fair assumption? After all, whatever happened to that good old American dictum, a person is presumed innocent until proven guilty? What actual proof do we have? We may or may not have some when I return with Act Three. form of thriller is uh, Jack the Ripper Murders, the psychotic killer who slaughters women at random because they do not measure up to his standards of purity and virtue. In these days of women's lib, however, we must not be male chauvinists and make all our killers masculine. Is it possible that we are dealing here with a Jacqueline the Ripper? Who knows? With us, Anything is possible. Boniface. Wilberforce Boniface. The professor. Dead? Yeah. I, I, well, I don't know what to say. Well, I, uh, I was hoping you might be able to tell me something. You know, after all, he was one of your boarders. Well, he would sleep all day and go out drinking all night. Well, think hard, Dennis. Did uh, he know... Harry Perkins? Yeah, Harry Perkins, the manager at the bus depot who was murdered the other night? Well, I, I, I couldn't be sure, but uh, uh, why? Well, we got an idea that the same person murdered them both. That... the same person? Why? Cornstarch. The professor also had this smudge of cornstarch across his face. And a knife wound in the back. Cornstarch? Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. And that's what we're calling the murderer now. The cornstarch killer. But why, why would uh, the killer leave cornstarch on the victim's face? Eh, well, we got nuts in this world like you never dreamed existed. Do you know anyone who would want to kill a professor? Kill him? Uh, no. Anybody in a house who might have been mad at him? In the house? Uh, 
Well, at, at present, there's just myself and Miss Menhaden. Uh, maybe I'd better talk to Miss Menhaden. Yeah, but she doesn't know anything about Professor Boniface. Can you be sure of that, Dennis? You know, tell her I'd like to, uh, interrogate her. If you don't mind. <laughs> Miss M Menhaden, uh, there's a police officer downstairs. The relative of the famous musician? He, he, he wishes to talk with you in an official capacity. It seems that there has been another murder. Another one? Uh, this one, even closer to home, I fear. Uh, I, I actually, at home. Poor Professor Boniface. The lecture? Well, whatever. The unfortunate fellow is dead. Officer Paderewski will want to know if you know anything about it. Yes. I know about it. You, you do? Professor Wilberforce Boniface was an abomination. As such, he was removed from this earth. Removed? Justice was done. Morality was served. Uh, yes, but who d did the doing and the serving? I know that he was struck down because his time had come. Well, yes, I can understand that point of view, but the police might press you for specific. Why? If you say you know who killed poor Professor Boniface, he will automatically ask, who? Who? I should think anyone knows who. The Avenging Angel. The Avenging Angel. Yes, and now there's one less of them. Them? And she wouldn't say another word. I ushered her downstairs to Officer Paderewski. I am ashamed to say that he was merely using the murder as a pretext for having a, a conversation with her. Do you go out uh, very much, Miss Menhaden? Out? Oh, you know, uh, for a little fun. Fun? Laughs. What is it you're trying to say to me, officer? Well, I uh, was wondering if some night we officer, could... Officer, uh, uh... I dislike the way you look at me. And I detest the way you talk to me. I know a place. Oh, I dare say. Oh, I could show you a great time. Have you any questions to ask me in your line of duty as a police officer? <laughs> police officer, indeed. Who shall watch the watchman? Good night. Now there is a dish. I'm afraid you angered her. Officer Paderewski, huh? there's... Something you must know. Well, what is it, Dennis? Well? Well, what? What could I tell him? Could I tell him that Maud Menhaden had spoken in a threatening manner about both Harry Perkins and Professor Boniface? Could I tell him that she had been out somewhere when the professor was killed? And about the cornstarch? Why did she want the cornstarch? Wasn't that something that might be of interest to the police? And yet I... I couldn't say a word. Hey, Dennis! Oh, Officer Paderewski. Uh, have you found anything new about the murders? The cornstarch killer, it's all over the media. Yes, yes. But has anyone reported seeing anyone who might be a suspect? Eh, not a rumble. Now, how this guy can manage to sneak up behind his victim and just slip the knife into the back... I, I, uh, you, you, you say guy. Why are you so sure? Hey, hey, hey. Are you trying to tell me it could be a dame? Well... Uh, then, uh, you're not a bad guy, but when it comes to figuring out murder, you've been over your head. But suppose I were to tell you... Oh, hold it, hold it. <laughs> who dare she hit? Who, who? Look, across the street. Miss Menhaden. Mm, look, get the walk on her. Mm, mm. And at that moment, I saw her. I saw Maud Menhaden for the first time. It was a, a flash of revelation. I saw her as the most beautiful and desirable woman in the world. How 
could she be a killer? And even if she is, which is a ridiculous assumption, how can you lose her? I ran home as quickly as I could. I listened. I could hear her upstairs in her room. Oh, my darling Maud. I was about to knock on her door and make my impassioned declaration of love when I heard the sound. Was it my imagination? Was she sharpening a knife? What could I do? I went back to my sitting room to think. I, I, I turned on the radio. There was a program of 8th century Albanian folk music. It put me to sleep. Ah, I awoke. It must have been hours later. The radio was still on. And now, the news headline on the hour. The notorious cornstarch killer has struck again. No. Another victim. This time, an officer of the law. Patrolman Rutherford Hayes Paderewski killed while walking his beat, stabbed in the back. And as a signature, a smudge of cornstarch across his cheek. More details as they come in. Now we return to... I waited for Miss Menhaden to come home. And finally I heard the front door open and close and her footsteps in the hallway. Uh, Miss Menhaden. Oh, good evening. Uh, are, you all, are you all right? Of course. Why do you ask? Well, you, you know there was another murder. Another murder? The officer Paderewski. The police say it was by the same person. Do they? He was stabbed in the back. And the usual signature, the cornstarch, was smudged on his face. Well, that's one less of them. Them? If you'll excuse me. Uh, Miss Menhaden, uh, you remember you borrowed the cornstarch? Yes. Oh, shall I return it? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, you were about to tell me what you used it for? Face powder. Fa face powder? Well, of course. At one time, ladies only used cornstarch or rice powder. Well, why would you want to use anything at all? You're beautiful. What are you saying? Desirable. Mr. Truffle, do not look at me like that. Not you. Your face, your body. I see do lust you... in your eyes. Don't look at me. Dearest Maud. Oh, lewd, lascivious fool. She ran upstairs to her room and slammed the door. I knew. I knew now how three men had died. She did not sneak up behind them. No, no. She approached them slowly, with her mouth parted in a slow smile, her eyes shining with promise. And she embraced them, which is how the cornstarch powder rubbed off on their faces. And as she kissed them passionately, she deftly inserted the knife into their backs where it quickly found a home in their hearts. I sat in my chair, and I listened. Ah, did I hear the sound of the knife being sharpened again? And now, the door is opening upstairs, and I hear steps approaching. Yes, yes. I see her. She's coming down to me, and her hair, her beautiful golden hair has fallen across her shoulders and her face has a smile a tender smile of invitation and there's a light a light that seems to be smoldering in her eyes and she's wearing a robe but cannot conceal nor does she mean it to conceal the soft, beautiful curves of her body. And she's coming closer. Kiss me, Dennis. Kiss me, Dennis, darling. 
Shall I let her place her arms around me, or shall I stop her? Shall I demand to see if she holds a knife in the sleeve of her robe? Kiss me, Dennis, darling, kiss me. Is this how she approached the others? Is this what she said to each of them before she killed them? Ah, Dennis, I love you. How do I know she killed anybody? I want you now, Dennis. Now? Yes, now, right now. I cannot destroy the magic of this moment. I must take her in my arms now. I, I, I can't help myself. I must take her in my arms Did he win or lose? What do you think? I regret to say that the cornstarch killer had struck again. Yes, in these emancipated days, we are all equal all the way. Equal pay for equal work is what the ladies quite justly demand, and so it happened with Maud Menhaden. Captured finally by a policewoman, I might add, and she received equal pay for her work. She was sentenced to a fatal visit to the scaffold. I shall return shortly. Our friend Dennis Truffle died in the violence of passion. And yet, he probably died happy in the arms of the woman he loved. It wasn't much of an affair, perhaps, from your perspective or mine, but it was the great love of his life. And if it was of only momentary duration, well, who is to say longevity is always for the best in these matters? After all, you will admit he didn't have time to grow tired of her. Our cast included Robert Dryden, Marion Selders, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>